Hi, this is George Fotonakis, and today I'm going to give you a little overview on how to put together this HTC Universal Mobile Base. It looks like a nice substantial unit. It has a 500 pound capacity, but what I found sorely lacking was the instruction book. So I'll lead you through step by step very quickly how to put this all together. Take a look at what I have here. This is a small portable table saw and below it I have a planer and to make this mobile all I have to do is take these two levers and push them like this it lifts the wheels off the ground and you can see I have a lot of easy mobility and when I get it right where I want it all I have to do is come back down to these pedals and disengage them and they flop back down you can see that's nice and sturdy and ready to use. Now the basic tools called for are wrenches a pliers and a tape measure. I would strongly recommend if you have access to them because you're going to be putting in a lot of little bolts and nuts is if you could just get a little ratchet with a 7 16 inch socket and along with that if you have a little impact driver with a 7 16 socket at the end you'll fly right through this activity. Prior to starting, I would suggest laying out all your pieces. You can see here I've taken all the nuts off of the little bolts. I've laid out all the flanges that are going to be used to expand your carrier. And over here, what I've done is a layout, an expanded view layout of the entire apparatus as it would be put together. Now I'm going to hold that shot right there if you want you can freeze this frame and for those of you that don't like to follow directions you can just take a look at this and it almost shows you how it will telescopically fly together going a little bit closer you can see at each corner you have one of these wheels and you have a two inch bolt that's going to go through with a nut and notice there's a little nylon washer that's going to go between the wheel right here and the body of the corner. You have a duplicate of that on the other side where you can see that right here we have that washer again, the two inch bolt, and the corner. Going up a little bit higher you can see here we have the opposite corners and there's two of them and I have that exploded out for you so you can see the corner here you can have the adjustable height pad that's going to go into this hole. And then over here you can see there's this large flange that fits into this piece. And there's a long 3 inch bolt that goes right through here, through the flange, and it holds the flange in place. And then after that's in place, this plastic elevator lever goes down in here. And there's a two and a half inch bolt that goes through these holes in here and locks that in place. When you're almost done, you can see we have this caster, swivel caster that goes through this hole. And this nut on top tightens it into place. This actually will kind of come up here and fit. Now that may be enough for most of you, but if not, what I'm going to do is take you through the assembly and I'll try and make this go as quickly as possible so this film isn't too long and too boring for you. The first step is to take this thing called a swivel plate and put it into this bracket using a three inch bolt. You can see I've set one in here already running this long bolt through and connecting it with a nut. I found the easiest way to do this is to take this swivel bracket and move it to almost its highest extension like that and then the bolt slides in pretty easily and tights on the other side. So go ahead and do that to both of these. The next step which is actually step three in the instruction booklet is to take this orange piece of plastic called the actuator cam and apply it to this bracket. Now there's two ways you can do it. You can put it so it opens and closes towards the inside or towards the outside. Personally, you have a lot of mechanism hanging out already, so I prefer to have mine on the inside. You can see I've already done this one. And to do this one, you simply slip this and align it with the holes, and then take, I would have the nut on the inside, go straight through and put the nut on it, 
I'm leaving everything loose until I'm done and then I'm going to tighten up all the nuts. So go ahead and do this step now. Now our next step is going to be to take this swivel caster and attach it right here. You can see I've already done it on this side. So the next step is just go ahead and drop this through and tighten that nut on down. So would you go ahead and complete that on both of these. Our next step is going to be taking this rubber leveling pad and threading it into this side hole. It's threaded so you can thread this up and then after you've threaded it to the height that you would like to have it, then you can take this second zinc nut and tighten it down on here and then after it's tightened down obviously that will lock in that particular height permanently. Now we're going to put the stationary wheel into the bracket and there's a little trick on this. You want to have this nylon washer placed between the wheel and this bracket and it's kind of hard to hold it there. They recommend taking another bolt running it through and threading it a little bit onto that washer and then coming in here and very carefully lowering the wheel down, lining it up and now notice I'm pushing this bolt in a little bit with that nylon washer and then you take the bolt you're going to use, run it through, it will go through that washer and lock it into place with a nut. Would you go ahead and put both of these wheels on each side? for The final step is deciding how big of a base you need for the machine you're going to be moving. In my case, I'm going to go with 22 inches internally, so I'm going to give myself an extra inch. I'm going to go 23 each way, so I need a 23 inch square. And because I need 23 inches, I'm not going to need the smaller brackets that they give you. You can use these if you'd like to, but the other ones are a little beefier, and I find that in lining it up, I'll be using the three holes here lining up with the three outer holes of the corner bracket on each side and I'm going to be putting a nut in the furthest out hole and then this one here and leaving the middle one blank so I'll be tying those in with two bolts and nuts on each side. I would not tighten any of these nuts and bolts down because I found the first time I did this I had to take it apart and put it back together about four or five times because I kept deciding which uh, direction I wanted to thing the roll and it changed the dimensions. So go ahead and loosely tighten in your nuts and bolts. Well our final step is to go ahead and tighten all those new loose nuts down and I'm glad I told you not to tighten them because I've changed my dimensions twice already. After you get the nuts in place, you can either use crescent wrenches, sockets, or if you have them, a setup like this where you use an impact driver and put your ratchet on one side and you're good to go. Just it's that bad to get those in there. So um, I'm glad you took the time to take a look at this little video. I hope it saved you some time because some of the things that they listed in the parts manual aren't even existing in the bag they send you. So I hope this helped you sped up your work time a little bit and thank you for watching.